Uh, our next guest is another great Australian. He is, of course, the captain of the Socceroos. They have a couple of very important matches coming up. They're only friendlies. They've got Switzerland on the weekend and then Poland a little later on, if only a few days apart. But the big thing about these matches is we have a new Australian coach. So would you please welcome to the show Lucas Neal to talk about that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and, Lucas, the first question, obviously, is what can you tell us about this new bloke, Holger Orsic? Yeah, he's been very positive. He's uh, been very animated. Immediately taken us by the scruff of the neck and down to the uh, boardroom and we've had a meeting about his kind of concept, his idea of how he wants the game played when we've got the ball and when we don't have the ball. Uh, so he's made it very clear his, uh, his agenda, uh, which is always nice as a player so you quickly get an understanding of what's required of you as a player and then we've gone out and tried to start executing that on the pitch uh, but it's slow steps and small steps at first and but the the signs seem very good. Lucas how does he differ from Pim Verbeek? We saw a little bit of him and I know you've only had a couple of days with him just first up in terms of personality and approach what what is the difference between the two? Uh, well obviously German and Dutch and without comparing people too much uh, and trying to look like one's better than the other he, he's a very positive uh, person uh, but Pim was in a different type of way they've both got different styles um, I think uh, this new boss is, is a lot more direct um, he has a philosophy and he's not scared to, to show it and, and give it to you straight away um, he doesn't play too many games where you have to find out the answers um, he likes to let everybody know straight away what what's required um, so he's brutally honest uh, he also wants to make sure that the players have a lot of fun but they do it with a, a lot of respect um, that's not to compare to Pim I think Pim but but just Pim had a different way of, of trying to get his performances out of players so both are going to be very good uh, one was good. Uh, I'm sure Holger, the new boss, will be exactly what the team needs at the moment and uh, the boys are very, uh, giving him very positive feedback. Lucas, you're professional footballers and you do a great job of it, but how difficult is it uh, for you guys to get together as a group and, and take on a new structure, a new style of play in, in a pretty short period of time before you play these couple of uh, friendly matches? Yeah, it's not, not easy. Uh, like you said, as a professional you, you turn up and you try and do the best you can, but yeah, he's got to find a little bit out about us as players and as characters and, and obviously we're going to have to, on the way, find out about him. We have got a core of players who pretty much know each other inside out, which is going to help. So it's not like we're just assembling a team f for the first time ever. Uh, but there is certain things that we are going to have to get used to, the style and uh, the, the tempo and the, the, the type of play that he wants to achieve. So. You know, we're all going to learn together, but on the way, obviously, as always, Australia will have that 100% um, commitment and the never say die attitude. And the further along we go, I think the better we're going to get. And, and obviously, we want to peak at around January, and where we're really starting to play as a team, and everybody knows their jobs inside out and is carrying out the manager's instructions as per the, the six months that's going on now in the lead up to that. In that time, Lucas, how important is your job as captain? Is there any indication that Holger is going to rely on you to find out more about this team and get it moving the way he wants more quickly? Yeah, we've had a few one-on-one -on -one chats already. Uh, he's very open. He likes to use com communication as a big tool. Uh, he's already what? tried to make me buy into his style, which I, I, I'm happy to say that I'm, I agree with 99% of the things he's done so far. So. Um, it's easy for me then to transfer what he's trying to say on the pitch because often it's players that can see things happening quicker than the manager and uh, the sooner we get you know, four or five of us buying into that style and, and the desire that he wants, the quicker we can just um, spread it out through the team and make sure everybody's on the same page. Lucas, you've got friendlies coming up this weekend against Switzerland and Poland but you've had a couple of withdrawals with injury. I think Kennedy and Kuhl are both out. What sort of hold does that leave? And is there anyone who will get to see maybe step up and get an opportunity in these matches that we should keep an eye on? Yeah, it's unfortunate that for the manager's first camp he won't have the likes of Harry and Josh and it's unfortunate for those two players that they won't be here to, to get a first taste of what's required of them and the style that they're going to have to start getting used to in training and in games. But uh, that also leaves an opportunity for the likes of Scott McDonald to come back into the squad and perhaps get a chance to play 
and get that goal that he's been yearning for for so long. Um, I think the likes of Tommy Orr are looking good in training and I could go on and on. Uh, but the team selection, as always, is never down to the players. They can only try and um, impress the manager in training. Uh, but I'm sure he's got some ideas and he's got some experience that he wants to do. And throughout these next two games, everyone's going to get game time because that's the only way you can really see if a player um, can handle the situation that he's looking for uh, in a game situation. Lucas, I'm not sure if you're aware that a couple of boys in the A-League uh, in the last round have been suspended for two weeks for diving, for simulation. How do you see it? Do you see it as something we need to stamp out of the game or it just is a part of modern professional football? Yeah, you, you're going to make me talk about referees here and I have to be really careful. So um, if, if something happens as small as that on a pitch, uh, I think it's up to the referee to have to make the decision there and then. If you start uh, going down to judiciary for every single thing that is breaking a rule in the game, um, look, we're, we're humans. We will break rules. That's, that's standard. That happens when people get fatigued. That happens when people try and perhaps, uh, like you've just mentioned, do something to benefit their team. Uh, but the referee has a couple of assistants and one on the side who together they have to try as best they can to get the, the best decisions and the big decisions right on the day. If we start going back on video feedback on everything that happens in the game and start giving out suspensions, I think we're going to have players missing games quite regularly and uh, I don't think that's in the spirit of the game. Yeah, it's a very good point. No one's really mentioned in the debate here, Lucas, about how much it does reflect back on the referee. So I have a feeling we'll be talking about it a lot more and uh, with very little change. Thank you very much for your time, mate. I appreciate it. All the best for the friendlies and, of course, for your club work in Turkey and beyond. Thanks, mate. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.